Welcome to the Earth Goodwill Project. Thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing to our content. Today's discussion will focus on the Earth Changes in 2020, the rise of creatives across Mother Earth, the mass influx of walk-ins into positions of power and influence across the Earth starting within the next week, the exit of many souls who have completed their soul missions here on Earth, and the greater respect for the environment and the animal marine and bird life kingdom across Mother Earth and humanity. And we'll also be discussing the fall of the false prophets across Mother Earth in 2020. What is going on at the moment in the world is we're having a massive changes are happening across Mother Earth in 2020. There is a mass exodus of people on Mother Earth who have completed their soul missions on Earth and they are choosing to pass on through various means. One is uh, different viruses that are uh, popping up across the Earth and other means is through accidents, cancer, suicides, um, just strange events, so different things right across the Earth. So this is happening because their time on Earth has come to an end and they have completed their missions on Earth, regardless of whatever age they are. And it's time for them to move on into the higher realms. In other cases, what we're seeing is uh, there has been a lot a there's been a lot of false prophets that have risen because spirituality is now trending across the, the Earth. People are jumping on, bad, on board the spiritual bandwagon, particularly many. Uh, celebrities and tarot card readers and people who are out of work hustlers you know former prostitutes that type of thing who are former drug dealers who don't have a form of income and they're looking to grow uh, their income base through being spiritual teachers yet they haven't done they haven't earned that title because they haven't done the work so this is what's happening across mother earth at the moment in 2020 a lot of the former spiritual leaders like Dolores Cannon and many others, many of the professional development speakers and uh, spiritual masters, they foresaw this happening many decades ago and they warned their, their students to be mindful of this happening and we're seeing it becoming more and more prominent across the world, particularly on social media during, during lockdown in 2020, that there are many people claiming to be spiritual practitioners and spiritual teachers. So what to look for when you are trying to find a spiritual teacher online or in person is typically a spiritual teacher is someone who gives light, they give understanding, they give wisdom, they have leadership. They generally have some form of healing ability, whether that be through light, through sound, through energy. It might even be uh, through uh, numerology, astrology, could be uh, Reiki, Alexander Technique, body work, any type of body work. So they, they basically have different skills, healing skills in many different modalities and there's hundreds of modalities and none are right or wrong. They're all as good as each other and they all benefit society in some way, shape or form. So what to look for when you find, you're looking for a spiritual teacher is looking for someone who has wisdom, someone who, ha who is full of light, someone who fills you with joy or understanding, healing, uh, light. If you listen to them and you're filled with anger, confusion, fear, or you're not feeling uh, mentally well, then that would suggest that this is not the right spiritual teacher for you, that they, they may or may not be a fraud, but it's someone that you should perhaps not align yourself with. Also another sign with spiritual teachers is if they steal other people's content and don't reference the source of that content, then generally that would suggest that they don't have their own creativity, they don't have their own connection to source, to, to God, to the higher realms and the, the most high, and they're getting that information from other sources. So they're passing off other people's information as their own. And from what I have experienced is they have no ability they have no ability to generate their own ideas they don't have the ability to form solutions to problems or they can't create and innovate in the same manner as 
true spiritual practitioners and innovators can and creatives can. So these are some typical signs to look for. Another thing to look for is generally they'll practice hypocrisy. So they say one thing and do another. And an example of that might be they claim to be a spiritual teacher, yet they will go out six or seven nights a week on the town drinking and drugging and sleeping around with, you know, dozens of random strangers, which seems absurd, but it's still happening in 2020, despite the dangers. They might claim to meditate every day or on a regular schedule, yet you look at their energy body and that would suggest otherwise. So their energy body might be full of holes or tears or have entities in their chakras which uh, they which causes them to be confused or their energy body is just dirty and grayish so that's that's a typical sign of identifying someone who is not a true spiritual teacher but from a practical level a spiritual fraud might say bizarre things like for example they might say that they live in 5d or 6d or 7d reality yet they practice uh, taking drugs like hallucinogenic drugs like magic mushrooms or LSD to elevate your consciousness and your light body to 5D you have to be vibrating at a very high level and you can't be vibrating at a high level if you're drinking and consuming alcohol on a regular basis or consuming street drugs it's just not possible it's just not physically it's just not possible another sign to look for with spiritual frauds what has happened over the last 15 years from what I have seen is that a lot of the police and intelligence agencies particularly in the West they have placed a lot of false spiritual prophets into spiritual groups As true spiritual leaders they were removed from the earth before their time along with whistleblowers and human rights advocates and environmental and animal activists so and instead false spiritual prophets to lead these spiritual groups and most people who can read energy or who know about spirituality were scratching their heads trying to work out how can this be so how did this person all of a sudden become the leader of this group this has happened because they've been working with police and intelligence agencies and these agencies have been wanting to control these organizations by putting in false prophets so they're controlling the people they're controlling the information and they're controlling the power so these false prophets won't last they are being exposed one by one and what that means is that the people that were taken off the earth plane before their time are now reincarnating to complete their their life purpose and their spiritual missions here on earth because it wasn't their destiny to die and the false spiritual prophets are going to or are in the process of being exposed this year Many of the false spiritual prophets have been practicing dark, art, dark arts. I'm not going to go into details of their methodologies because I don't want to encourage people to misuse powers. But essentially they've been practicing the dark arts to steal energy, steal spiritual gifts, interfere with Akashic records and stop people from achieving their, their full potential in life. So anyone that, that engages in these practices, whether they be individuals or organisations, that there's a karmic, there's a boomerang, boomerang effect. And what happens is in turn, by practising the dark arts, they will succumb to mental illness and in some cases early death. They'll be put into a mental prison because they've put other people, in, imprisoned other people and, and prevented their freedom. And we're seeing this happen across the world. So that karma doesn't just play out for the individual or the organisations they work for, it also plays out for the people in the regions that they live in. So you have that's why you have different regions that are locked down in different parts of the world because that karma is playing out for those people to understand the lessons of how disempowering it is to limit one's full potential and to lock them away when they are innocent of, of uh, they have committed no crimes and, and what, what it feels like. So society is starting to wake up to the consequences of abuses of power and poorly defined government actions and the individuals that are responsible namely like police informers gaslighters and false spiritual prophets who are responsible for having innocent people particularly light workers and spiritual teachers 
and environmental activists and, and animal activists, the individuals are responsible for putting these people away into prisons or into mental health hospitals or to their untimely deaths. Their time on earth has ceased in 2020. This is what I've been told. They've been given a chance after chance after chance to redeem themselves and to come out and tell the truth and to stop doing black magic, to stop abusing power, and they've failed on every occasion to do this. So they're now being sent to a karmic sin bin, which is shown to me to be something like a, it's an interplanetary type of prison and it's housed in some gaseous, but it has some gaseous planet, has some rusty type of atmosphere and there's, they're contained within these uh, box-like prisons which uh, there's no, it's lined so they're telepathic energy and the energy can't come in or out so they can't influence the thoughts or communicate with any of their guides or any of the demons that they work with or lower entities that they work with while they're contained within these energetic prisons. And from what I'm shown, the individuals that are being sent there, the ones that I know, are being sent there for tens of thousands of years and in some cases tens of millions of years. So they've been completely removed from the earth plane for a long time so they can't cause harm to other people. So for example, we have one who claims to be a spiritual teacher. Technically he is, but he was never karmically entitled to have that title and how he's moved up so quickly so fast is he was working with organizations to remove all the legitimate spiritual teachers from power and place and that's through defamation and through gossip maliciousness and working with police agencies to have people silenced and gaslighting them so he has retained top position and it was his intention to retain global top position with all spiritual schools around the world and this will never happen because it was never his destiny he in the past he was responsible for the fall of atlantis one of the people that was responsible for misusing power in the crystal kingdom and spiritual gifts in atlantis he did the same thing in lumeria he was one of the key architects for the fall of lumeria and again, he was one of the key people responsible for the divisiveness in the fall of Rome. And the same thing is true for one of the societies in Mesopotamia. So he was one of the key architects for the fall of Mesopotamia as well. In, in actual point of fact, he has also been written about by C.W. Leadbeater in one of his books, Masters in the Path. He may, keeps reincarnating and making the same mistake time after time after time time again incarnating and bedding himself into different spiritual schools and karmically he's been blocked from ascending each lifetime and so are his students because he has blocked the true potential of other individuals during his each of his times here on earth so essentially what i've been shown is that regions of the world and cities and metropolitan areas states and nations that do attempt to dim the light of individuals and groups of individuals whether they be refugees or they be minority groups like Muslim minority groups or Tibetans or whatever whatever religion or caste they too in turn will have their light diminished so government bodies and different agencies and individuals that uh, engage in limiting the potential the human potential of people will in turn have their potential and the potential of their children limited also if they hold positions of power and influence in society then you'll find that those particular regions that they live in they will also suffer the same karmic repercussions being cut off from society being socially isolated being denied employment having health problems being having mental anguish due to their circumstances and 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 what have you so the moral of the story is don't engage in narcissism, don't engage in psychopathic or, or sociopathic type tendencies to cut other people down, to defame or gossip or backstab people because there are severe karmic repercussions in 2020 to continue to behave in these types of, of uh, socially poor behaviours. Other areas of change in 2020 is there'll be a renewed focus on the environment, on nature, connecting with nature, and the animal kingdom, respecting the animal kingdom, bird life, marine life, and cleaning up Mother Earth. 
because we're all in it together. So companies that are socially responsible and have environmental policies embedded in their values and embedded in their mission and their vision, their company vision and organisational visions, they will succeed. Organisations that are not aligned with protecting the environment, protecting animals, protecting humanity, they will collapse. So unless they're aligned with the New Earth goals, they will collapse and other ones will rise very, very quickly. So these are the companies, these are the organisations, these are the the nations and the regions that will succeed. There's going to be a massive soul swap and a lot of these uh, former saints and spiritual teachers and spiritual masters and healers, artists, lots of artists, lots of singers, lots of musicians from the last few hundred years, they're going to be incarnating into Mother Earth en masse, hundreds of thousands of them en masse. This mass incarnation of light workers will lift the vibration of the planet very, very quickly. And because they're incarnating into positions of power and influence on the planet, they will change the structure of the earth very quickly for the better. So this structure will come in the form of, of change government legislations. They'll bring in new technologies that are ethical, that are not breaching privacy, that are not related to surveillance of people that don't cause harm to humanity. They will bring in new healing technologies very quickly that will help heal, freely heal people across the planet. They'll be involved in re-educating the medical fraternity and the health system to understand energetic sciences and healing sciences and have a better understanding of nutrition and how natural therapies affect the health and well-being of people, animals and the planet. So they'll have more focus on sustainable environmental practices, which was the original karmic blueprint of Mother Earth before it changed in the last 10 years and it's now been brought back on the table. So everything has changed, everything has shapeshifted and changed. And this is in part due to the mass prayers of billions of people across the Earth who are struggling in 2020. And it's also due to various people in positions of leadership who are starting to wake up and realise the error of their ways and, and looking for change. And this is the fastest way that we have identified to implement positive changes on Earth. So these positive changes will prevent and mitigate a lot of the catastrophic Earth changes that were destined in the next 10 years. There was, some of them will still happen and there will still be a mass loss of life in some parts of the planets where these changes need to take place. But in other parts of the planets, it'll be more sl the changes will be more slow moving over the next 150 years in relation to the physical Earth changes and the tectonic plates on Mother Earth. So if you look at how those changes will affect different nations, don't be surprised to see different world leaders and one might even include a Chinese president completely flip-flop and change his policies for the better. All I'm allowed to say is expected the unexpected because a lot of unexpected things and the strangest of strangest things will happen in 2020 and a lot of it is good not all of it is bad. So I trust this knowledge will give you some understanding about what's coming in 2020 and put your mind at ease as to why the earth are going through so many drastic changes and what your role in these earth changes will be. As a side note, it's come to me very strongly in recent days that the trickery and deception that various false spiritual prophets are engaging in around the world will no longer be tolerated. And this is particularly the case with the energy harvesting through black holes and uh, siphoning off other souls' energy through nefarious means, which I'm not going to go into methodologies. It is happening and in some cases it is causing light workers their premature deaths and serious health problems and in other cases it's causing them severe financial hardship and homelessness and uh, unemployment. The message that I've been asked to voice today is that the hierarchy, the spiritual hierarchy will no longer tolerate the energy harvesting from people on earth and the interference in their divine will. Human beings are sovereign beings and uh, humanity is asked to practice discernment and to move away from false prophets and lower vibrational frequencies that they offer, often engage in. 
This is the same with government departments and corporations, organisations, industries that also engage in lower vibrational frequencies and put them out into the earth. This type of practice is, is just no longer, it, it will no longer be tolerated and the karmic repercussions I'm told will be severe. And this is why uh, the Galactic Federation are stepping in and intervening on Mother Earth at this time and being asked to pass on this message through different light workers and on different platforms across the earth at this moment. Today I got a strong message uh, and reminder from Star Wars films, particularly Master Yoda and people who are familiar with Star Wars films will recall when Luke Skywalker is in the swamp and his vehicle is, is immersed in the, in the depths of the, of the swampy water and he's trying to use the force to lay, lift his vehicle from the swamp yet he's failing and Luke gives up, he fails and he walks away in, and he's suffering from despair. And then as he gives up and, and, and walks off, Master Yoda lifts his vehicle from the swampy waters, from the depths of the swampy waters, back onto land and makes it fully functional. And he reminds him of the lesson to be the force, to connect with the force, to connect with the land, to connect with nature, to connect with the ship, his vehicle, which in our cases here on Earth is our light bodies, and to elevate his consciousness and be in line with the force. And he says to, to Luke, do or do not this, there is no try. So essentially what he was saying is you need to commit to an action, you need to make it happen. So Master Yoda reminds us that we live from the heart center and he embodies unity consciousness. He connects with the force, he connects with everything around him and he just makes things happen. So Yoda reminds Luke that the force grows and surrounds us and it remains as luminous as we be and that our physical bodies are just prude matter. So everywhere we go, we are encouraged to connect to this force and expand our light bodies. And then you can achieve the impossible. So this is a timely reminder for people who are still in lockdown and or possibly even in isolation or going through the depths of despair or depression or, or unemployment or homelessness at the moment. Don't try, see what you want to achieve and just go for it and do it and connect with the force and everything will be fine. That light workers are being reminded around the earth to uh, embody the light and hold and shine the light everywhere they go and to shine this light in their families, in their online communities, in their workplaces, in their social groups their communities, their states and nations and together we will rise out of the situation we're finding ourselves in particularly with the people and the communities that are still in lockdown and I know there are some in Australia, in Victoria that are who are going through the depths of despair and the dark night of the soul at the moment so I just wanted to share that message about rising like a phoenix from the ashes and recalling the teachings of Master Yoda in Star Wars series. Thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing to our content. Namaste.